What is up guys, Eric here with Team Eccentric and I'm bringing you guys some quarantine testing as the Yu-Gi-Oh! community has dubbed it. The crush card virus has essentially affected all of our locals and every other event around us. So uh, we resort to playing at home and we're testing Master Rule 5 now. Um, even though it's before April, I mean April's only about a week away so at this point we just figure that we're going to test Master Rule 5 and show you guys kind of what a lot of decks are capable of once the turn of the month occurs. So Connor's on the left and he's playing his heroes and Tom is on the right and he's playing his uh, True King Dino. So we will uh, see effectively the matchup between these two decks and they roll the dice. And uh, here I believe... Um, Tom, I think, is going first here, and that is true. He activates the double evolution pill. Uh, I think he drew kind of an awkward hand, um, so he, he opened a little weird. But uh, getting out the UTC, definitely, in some cases, a very strong disruptor in, this, in the fact that it can destroy a dinosaur from field or hand and then flip everything, which... Heroes, depending upon when Tom decides to utilize that effect, could have a really big impact on Connor's plays. But now Connor starts off with the the best boy Stratos, and he searches uh, Visionary Ferris. The ability for heroes to to accrue so many searches in one turn is pretty nuts, to be honest. The way that the deck works with with, with all the new support and everything, like the deck is really good at gaining advantage. Uh, he activates Ferris and ditches uh, Vision Hero Vion. Um, it's just a matter of if your opponent has the right kind of disruption. If your opponent drops a draw on you as you play heroes, you're screwed unless you have a call by the grave. So he activates the Vision Hero uh, increase from the deck, tributes the Ferris off, specials the increase from the Spell and Trap Zone uh, when it's considered a continuous trap. Then from there, he uses increase effect to special summon Vion from the deck. Then he attempts Vion's effect. Then he sends a Shadow Mist. And I believe here he attempts Shadow Mist, but then Tom chains UTC, which flips everything. So like I said, that puts Connor at a bit of a disadvantage because the thing about uh, these monsters is um, unless you have polymerization in your hand, you can't target a face-up hero with mass change, so it kind of kind of limits your plays, I believe. I don't. I think I'm pretty sure mass change you have to target a face-up hero, but Tom, Tom, or uh, Connor adds uh, Vision or Destiny Hero Plasma rather. Sorry about that. And then um, he tributes the three monsters. Summons Plasma. So Plasma is an interesting card in this scenario because he can steal the, the UTC um, and Tom already used UTC's effect so that's something of note. Um, and this puts Tom at a bit of a disadvantage because now all of his monster effects on the field are, are essentially skill drained because Plasma negates all cards on your opponent's field. So then uh, Connor activates Fusion Destiny, and then Tom scoops it up. So that's game one. Uh, Heroes clinching that game um, just by nature of uh, Destiny Hero Plasma. That card is actually really good. Um, I think Heroes utilize Plasma in such a way that, like, at least at this point, is kind of a backup play. Um, as you saw with Connor, I mean, he, Tom used uh, Ultimate Conductor to flip everything. But Connor at that point had three monsters on the field after sending for uh, Vion. So after after uh, after that, he just decided to search the plasma and then tri tribute off the three monsters that uh, were left on the field because they are still considered hero monsters. I'm pretty sure. And then there, uh, plasma just able to clinch that game for Connor. So that's game one. Uh, we're heading into game two and. Uh, Tom's deck is really strong, really capable of performing OTKs or shutting down um, opposing plays or opposing monster effects and things like that. Um, some of the best boards Tom has ended on have been 
Uh, a lot more impressive than just a UTC. I believe he probably just bricked that game. I do think dinosaurs have a tendency to draw awkward hands in the sense that, you know, sometimes you'll see um, a true king, lithosidrum, as well as a baby, or a diagram, which is amazing. Or you'll see hands like uh, a kaiju and a true king and a UTC, and that's it, and that that you can at least make function in that particular combo. So dinos are an interesting case of what's gonna, you know, what's your hand gonna be, essentially. It, it, it's, it's just one of those decks where you draw a good hand, great. You draw a bad hand, and you're in rough shape. But obviously any Yu-Gi-Oh deck is in that, in that vein, but dinos have a really hard time playing through their bricks because it's, you know, some of their, some of their, um, some of their cards are necessary engine requirements that if you draw, you, your whole deck is just kind of in an awkward spot. Whereas with heroes here, you can see Connor just, you know, his searches just go on for for days. So he activates the Adusted Gold searching the Dark Calling, um, which is an interesting play to open with. Perhaps it was to try and bait Nash, but either way. Connor activates Fusion Destiny, locking him into Dark Heroes. So he sends Destiny Hero Celestial to the main deck, and Destiny Hero Malicious. And he summons out what looks to be Dystopia. Now in Master Rule 5, by the way, you know, obviously we can summon Fusion, Synchros, and Exceeds into the main monster zones with no. Um, requirement for a link arrow. Um, Connor activates uh, Mali, specials the Mali, links up into Cross Crusader, which allows him to special summon a Destiny Arrow, so he special summons Dystopia, vanishes Mali, to special another Mali, and I believe here he's probably going to tribute that Mali to get a search. Add a Stratos. Connor's starting off really strong. He normal summons the Stratos because remember he he opened with uh, Fusion Destiny as his first summon. So now he's getting a search. So he's searching for Shadow Mist. So you can see Connor's just just accruing a massive board. The only issue that I have um, with the hero strategy inherently is that it doesn't set up any negates or any ways to apply pressure other than just making big monsters. So he activates Ferris and ditches Shadow Mist. The only card that really um, he activates Increase from the deck as a Continuous Trap. Uh, the only card that really stops your opponent going first is Dark Law, and then if you have potentially a Water Hero on your field, you can Mass Change it. Or if you have like Absolute Zero, you can Mass Change it into Acid, and that's I believe like the only opening plays other than maybe Plasma that really do much. But he tributes the Vision Hero Ferris to Special Summon the Increase. An increased special summons Vion. And then he's going to use Vion's effect to send a hero from deck to grave. So he sends uh, the the uh, other destiny hero that people play. <laughs> um, I can't remember what it's called. And then I believe here he uses... Yep, he uses uh, Vision Hero Vion's effect to add... Polymerization. So then from there he links and he goes into what looks to be, yeah, so he uh, goes into the one, um, yeah, the link, the link three that adds that sets a uh, polymerization or a mass change, I believe. So he then he polymerizations into look, what looks to be Vision Hero Adoration, and then he uses the Link Monsters effect to set the polymerization. And because he used um, Liquid Soldier, I think he did the, the Liquid Soldier effect to draw and then discard. Then he links up into the Dread Decimator, which is one of the ending ones. And he, after that, he uses Dark Calling and banishes Vision Hero Ferris and a Dusted Gold to make Malicious Bane. So, like I said, he has a board of amazingly strong, really effective monsters if they were going second. 
However, going first in this scenario, I just feel like heroes are great at at applying pressure, but they don't set up any negates inherently. They don't have a card that negates stuff. They're kind of a glass cannon in that sense. And that being said, sometimes it's and uh, yeah, there that's the main problem right there. Um, during before the end of main phase, you Nibiru heroes and they kind of just die. <laughs> Um, so now Connor, all he has is two back row after wasting all those resources for, you know, just to get Nibiru'd. And that's my main issue with heroes personally. The deck is still great. Connor plays them really well. It's just a matter of Nibiru is a card and heroes don't have the negates. And in some scenarios, as you saw with Fusion Destiny, can't set up the negates because they lock themselves into specifically either heroes or dark monsters or even both. In a lot of scenarios. Now it's Tom's turn. And uh, Tom with the uh, double evolution pill. So he banishes a true king and a dino. To special summon UTC. And that token is really big. It's really is a really big token on Connor's field. But then Tom can just send it. And then after that go for 3k direct. So, you know, it really isn't effective in defending Connor's life points in any way because Con Tom can just send it with UTC. So now it's Tom's turn, or Connor's turn, rather. And uh, Connor, I believe, forgot to activate Increase. Because he did take damage. But that happens. But either way, uh, Connor was smart in scooping it up because I, really, I don't think there really was much he could have done in order to mitigate that that play. I mean, UTC really is such a strong boss monster. It's it's an effective disruptor. It's 3,500. It attacks everything. It OTKs. It's literally everything you'd want in a boss monster on top of the fact that in tandem with it is Miscellaneousaurus. So during the main phases, if your opponent attempts to disrupt your disruption with UTC, so for example, um, if your opponent attempts to ogre you, you can Miscellaneous. You can just chain Miscellaneous Saurus as long as it's in one of the main phases. Um, obviously, you can't do it during the battle phase, um, but it only lasts for the main phase, so I suppose that is a point of contention, but either way. Um, so now it's uh, Connor going first. So he activates Ferris, ditches Increase. And then Increase from the deck. He tributes his special uh, Increase and an Increase effect. Special summons on, uh, a Vion. And then he uses Vion, I believe. And he sends a Mally. So, you know, doing his standard hero stuff. Then he banishes the uh, increase to add polymerization. Um, I personally would have banished the Ferris. But then after that, Tom drolls Connor, which leaves him in quite a bind because Hero's entire strategy relies on their c capability to add uh, cards and accrue hand advantage and just build, you know, just build card advantage and make big monsters and go in for game. And they can't do that if they can't add, um, you know, because you know they utilize all their resources without being able to add cards. So that leaves them in a very tight spot, and that's where Connor is at this point. However, he can still banish from Alley, and he can still Link Summon. So he goes into Cross Crusader, and then Cross Crusader's effect special summons the uh, Mally, and then he links with the Mally and the Cross Crusader into Dread Decimator, and he banishes that second copy of Mally, trying to set up a wall here. Um, however, I don't think that that technically would be the smartest play in this scenario, only because UTC can just crash through all of it, so that's something. Um, unless, obviously, his, his uh, Dread Decimator has enough attack points, but even in that scenario, Tom can get rid of that. So then from here, he uh, activates Polymerization. And he polys into what looks to be Vision Hero Adoration. Then he sets one. And I believe he passes. Perhaps not. So he 
counting the amount of heroes in his uh, graveyard because uh, obviously Dread Decimator gives every hero it points to as well as itself an extra 100 attack points for each hero in the graveyard. And I believe it was five. So then he has uh, Honest Neos, which seemed to have clinched the game for him, I believe. Yeah, it seems Tom drew an awkward hand. Um, so I, I guess uh, the draw was kind of a last, a last thing just to stop Connor's play, and then hopefully Tom would have drawn into something a little different. But I suppose Connor won that game. Um, yeah, so that's that's the game for you guys. Um, it it was kind of an awkward game only because uh, you know we were we were testing Master Rule Five and we're still kind of you know learning the the nuances and the nooks and crannies of, of, of Master Rule 5. Obviously we know it, but it's more a matter of we haven't played by summoning fusion monsters and next season synchros into the main monster zones in a long time. So that being said, we're kind of reverting back uh, to that, you know, to that play style where you can just throw out extra deck monsters for essentially free so long as you have the resources without having to utilize link summons. Um, unless of course you're a pendulum player, which in that case, sucks for you but either way guys uh eric here with team eccentric uh i'll be bringing you guys some more dual videos we'll be doing a lot of testing now that we are, f are essentially in uh quarantine uh you know this uh quote unquote crush card virus has really put a damper on things around here so um you will you might be seeing a lot more of team eccentric videos only because of the fact that like hours got cut at work uh on my part as well as uh, on tom's part and Connor, you know, Connor's work is still functioning rather well, but uh, we'll just have to see. So, again, Eric here with Team Eccentric, and I'm signing out. Rate and subscribe, leave your comments and ideas in the comments section below, and don't hesitate to give us respectful suggestions on content you want to see. Eric on behalf of the team saying take care, and Team Eccentric out.